The work that Christ did on the cross is finished. He did it. Now you believe in Christ, receive Him, and you become a new creation. You are born again, born from above, born of God. Jesus said in um, John 16, it says, uh, He said, Up to this time, you have not asked a single thing in my name. But ask and keep on asking, and you will receive, so that your joy may be full. To him who is able to do with the power that is at work within us, that is able to do far above that we dare ask or think. Joshua and Caleb saw the giants, but they saw something else. David saw Goliath, but he saw something else. So God is saying to us, what do we see? What do we think? Because he's able to do far above that we dare ask or think. Way beyond our highest hopes and imaginations. Our thoughts. And the word of God is like a paintbrush. That paints upon your imagination and mind. And gives you the thoughts and pictures of God for your life. So whenever we hear the word of God, it should paint a picture. Therefore, we cannot hear it as facts alone, but we need to hear it and see it. Hear it and see it. So when you hear the word, picture it. For instance, the Bible says, I will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Or John 14, 12. How many of you know John 14, verse 12? In this church, favorite verse. I, that, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, those who believe will be able to do the things that I did and even greater. Now, no use for us just to know it as a fact. In your mind, have you seen yourself raise the dead, open blind eyes, lift people from wheelchairs? Have you seen yourself do it in your mind? Because if you have not, you need to hear it and then Allow your imagination to form the picture. Come on, guys. So, faith and hope works with your imagination. Or is connected to your thoughts and imagination. It's connected to what you see. <laughs> faith is seeing as it is. Hope paints the picture of what's going to be. And both of those, the hope and faith comes as we read the word, we get the hope clear and we get faith clear. And both is a picture that is painted. So imagining where you are heading in your life and imagining and seeing what Christ has done and where you are and who you are in Christ. Both is your imagination and your thoughts, which is influenced by the word that you hear. And the word that you hear paints those pictures. And if you hear it enough, the picture will become clear. Like I, I started this way, praying for the sick. I read in the Bible, I was shocked when I read Mark chapter 16 says, we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Remember, here's my mother, I went to them, I said, where is this in our church? You know, I went to the Duomini, I had an appointment with the Duomini, I said, I have, a, I have a problem here. Because this Bible says we should lay hands on the sick. Where is it in our churches today? And so I, I remember as a student, the actual, the reverends and the pastors and stuff, they, they dodged me. Because I always had these questions. I just want to hear. And I was so hungry to hear and know. And I thought, surely they, need, they, they have the answers. It wasn't just to challenge them. It was to actually hear maybe... And so, um, I read it in Mark chapter 16, and I started, I started seeing the scripture. Then I, I looked at Jesus and read where he healed the sick. When I found out John 14 verse 12 says, I will do the things that he did, I started picturing myself doing what Jesus did. I started seeing myself praying for people and they actually respond well. 
not like this uncomfortable, I know you've prayed, you've done your best, but I still have the pain. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I get both reactions still. But at the end of the day, I started seeing myself actually healing the sick. Laying hands on them and they get well. Then I watched videos. I know different preachers and I don't even want to mention the names because if you mention a name, then everyone is... I, I don't care what they believe, maybe not in agreement with everything they preach or whatever, but God used them to pray for this, to, 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 to heal the sick. And so I watched those people and I formed a picture. I said to myself, if he can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. So I read in the book of Acts and, I, and, and you read the story of how Peter uh, walked into the street and they carried the sick. And I see myself walking in places and the sick getting healed. So I'm forming, uh, started forming a picture in my mind of who I am in Christ. Remember, you are a new creation in Christ. What is that new creation man like? What can he do? Who is he? I see myself walking in his love. Same picture. Walking in peace. Walking in happy. Do you see yourself happy? Or do you see yourself sad? How do you see yourself? This is not just a mind thing here, and it's not just a motivation. This is seeing according to the Word of God. This is faith. But still, it works with your mind. It still works through your imagination. Your imagination is like this place where the things that God wants to do, it's almost like... Um, you, you, you receive it and con conception takes place. It's like the womb for the seed. All right, so this is what, how uh, Brother Andrew Womack explains it as well. So now, if that is true and we can start seeing according to the word, here's what I've done later in life as I pray for sick people. When I pray for them, I see them getting well or I see them healed. Not getting well, I see them healed. And if I pray for a deaf person, I picture something popping out of their ears, all right? So we have so many, um, so many people that we have prayed for that were healed of deafness. So in different churches, so one service it was up to 15 guys that I prayed for, and their hearing was restored. Completely deaf people, hearing. So I've been praying for these people and I have a picture in my, in my mind and the mo I see it open. The moment I see it open, it manifests. And the guy says, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. We have seen blind eyes open like that. And I realized when I pray, I see pictures. Or I see the man getting up from the wheelchair. Or I see life entering into the man. I see a light entering into people and the cancer is removed. And this one lady testified that the cancer completely disappeared. And re when I prayed for her, I remember I just saw it dissolve. And the doctor said, it's gone. There's no sign of cancer. So something happened and it's according to what we believe. But what did we believe? It's what we saw. So faith is seeing the inheritance and seeing it done. Hope is is the future, and faith is the substance of the things hoped for. So in any case, hear the word and form pictures <laughs> of where you're heading, and then take it one step further and start seeing yourself in it. Because it's just going to remain hope unless you receive it by faith. Faith lays hold of the things hoped for. The evidence, so faith causes you to receive. You're not receiving based on your emotions. Like if you have compassion on people, it should move you to pray. But we have never received anything from God based on our emotions. Based on His love for you, He died for you 2,000 years before you arrived. So your tears is not going to move Him to do it. Sorry to say, He loves you. He, he's sad when you are sad. But He did it in advance. And the only way you can receive from God is through faith. Guys, God is such a loving, wonderful, perfect God. He gave everything that you're ever going to need in advance. If you realize how good He is, you'll start receiving the free gift. 
And I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm planning on, on laying hold of my inheritance. Because actually, why leave an inheritance if we never walk in it? And we just dream of it for one day. Faith lays hold of what God has given now. And you receive it. So how do you see us? Do you see yourself struggling? Do you see? What pictures are you forming in your mind? Your imagination is working against you. Fear and faith works with imagination. Or is connected to your imagination. The pictures you form in your mind, either it's because you fear you form them, or the, the picture forms the fear. But it's, on the negative side, imaginations brings fear. Evil imaginations brought an evil report and they said, we are not able, they are like giants. We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Therefore, we were like grasshoppers in their eyes. And we were in their eyes as well. So they already had the picture. They are giants, we are grasshoppers. Caleb said, the day, 45 years later, Caleb still had the same picture. He said, give me the, the land where the giants is. That's mine. <laughs> same picture, same situation. So we're not denying the situation. We just have a different picture. People of faith will always challenge you. You will always speak to me and feel like I have no... Do you even know what I'm going through? <laughs> I say, man, I would cry with you. If we start crying, I, can, I am very emotional, so I can, I can cry with you for hours. But at the end of the day, it's not going to change the situation. My heart is as soft as yours. I'm, if I want to, I can cry. And I will cry. Because I can imagine. My imagination is alive. I can imagine your hurt. And I can see what you go through. And my mind is working also in that way. But I've chosen to use my imagination for good. And yes, I can have sympathy that way, but somewhere I need to change the picture and see you getting out of that mess. And if I see you out of the mess, I'll speak from this side and you'll speak from this side. And, 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 and I'm not going to join you, that side. And you can say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Someone believes with me that things can get better and things can change. <laughs> That's people of faith. They see a different picture. Faith perceives as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Christ already healed us. Now we need to see ourselves well. Christ already healed the world. Now we need to see, uh, or Christ gave us His very nature to heal the sick. Now we need to see ourselves healing the sick. What we see is what we're going to get. <laughs> that imagination... God will do above that, but He works on those lines. And this, uh, in Ephesians, it refers more to the, the hope side of it. But the moment you see it in faith, in, in, you see it now. Okay, so you're praying for a new car. I know, you know, people think God is not... Uh, okay, a new bicycle. Whatever you desire. <laughs> Have you seen yourself riding the bicycle? Or are you still praying and hoping that God will grant you the bicycle? The bicycle was already granted and given. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, then verse 2, Looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, and is also its finisher, for the joy that was set before Him. What did He have? A picture in His mind of you. Amen. And for the joy, that, that was the hope side, picturing the hope, the, the, the future. The joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross. So He had a picture of you, saved. Which caused him to go through the cross to save us. Beautiful, ne? Okay, so, but then he says, um, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Consider him and think of him. Now, looking away unto Jesus, 
the author and the finisher of our faith. In John 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So Christ is also the Word, and the Word is Christ. It's not the Bible. <laughs> it's the Word, the living Word. It's a person and He speaks. So He's connected to everything that He says. Now, take that into, factor that in, and keep your eyes on what God said to you. See it. Keep your eyes on what God said to you. Future hope and now faith. Looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus can also mean look away from all that will distract unto the Word. So, in the time period that's our hearts getting convinced of how good God is because the moment we believe, we receive. The time period that things are not manifesting. Where is your eyes? focused on? Or what do you see? Because he says, look away from this. This is just a distraction. Look away from it unto Jesus or unto the Word. So keep on seeing yourself driving that car. Start walking on the pavement and change the gears. <laughs> Act something out in faith. As you think and picture it. It can hurt no one to see yourself prosperous and blessed. See yourself. Because here's the thing. I have a heart to give to people. And I think, I wish I could just bless everyone. I have a heart to bless people. I wish I could just do this, do this. Yeah, so picture yourself doing it. And money will find its way into your hands and you will just do what you've been picturing. <laughs> All right, or God's heart is not just, He also wants you blessed. Uh, abundant life is like it's an overflow life where you have so much, you, you, you're blessed in Christ. I believe that, and I know people don't want to hear these, this good message. <laughs> not you, but others, you. If you start saying God wants to bless you, whoa, yeah, prosperity preacher. <laughs> I'd rather be a prosperity preacher than a poverty preacher. And if, if Christ is the heir of all things, and I'm a joint heir with Christ, it will be so disobedient not for me to prosper. I would be so disobedient to God, dishonoring. No, don't feel condemned. Just step out of it and say, God loves you if you're the poorest of poor. And His love for you will not change. But He loves you to help you prosper, see you well. Say if, say if someone is sick today... God is not judging them for they not, haven't received their healing. Kijk hier die ongelovigers. No, his, uh, his heart breaks for them. He wants to help them. And the moment someone believes, either someone praying for them or they, they see themselves well, they'll be well. Guys, God healed the world. There's no sick person on this earth. Even in a time of pandemic, believe it or not, everyone is already healed. Everyone is already healed. So, be, believe it or not, it's true. So, therefore, believe it. <laughs> so, believe it or not, so rather believe it. So, we need to start seeing these things. See, see, get a picture. Because you get an overload news. The news is facts, senses. So, if you meditate enough upon the news, which is only, it's not only fact, it's, it's partial fact, it's crooked fact, it's halfway there fact, it's not all the facts. So if the news gives you an information, you start seeing a picture, and if you feed enough on it, it will produce fear. You get it? And your picture of what's happening is fixed. Okay, don't ignore reality, just turn to Jesus and get His picture on things. And feed on the word and get your whole mind renewed to, to the truth. Truth is what God says. And picture, picture it, picture it until you walk in it. Um, when, when it's true, if you say to me, Yeah, but pastor, I've been hearing for so many years. I know, like the Bible says, by his wounds I am healed. Why am I still sick? Okay. <laughs> the Bible is not lying. All right? So, if you are healed and you're still sick, 
The one that needs to receive it is us. And what I am just honest, when I don't walk in something, I just say, I'm growing in my faith. God is helping me to see what He did for me. I won't say I believed and it didn't happen. I believe God for this and look what's happening. I, I, I am not there. I would just say, Ach, Jere, help my ongeluf. <laughs> and look back into the word and then I help my unbelief myself and get the word fixed. <laughs> Jere, help me net. <laughs> so, so you, it's, not, it's not God keeping anyone sick. You are speaking sickness, thinking sickness, and you are seeing yourself sick. And you are offended at God for not healing you. you the just shall live by faith, not by sight. So basically, because of what you see, the offense is growing. Because you see yourself sick. You see yourself sick. Now, I'm not making light of it, if someone goes through sickness, hey, brother, sister, it is not easy. It must be, like I said, we will all cry. <laughs> I will cry more than you. <laughs> my heart all break. I'm, I'm honest. It's the way I would feel. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change the Word of God. And that's, I'm glad. I'm glad that even if though I see it partially, there's a fullness still available. Even though I see a little bit of what God can do, there's more for me to know and believe and see. Amen. So I would rather say I didn't believe, but I want to believe. So Lord, show me how can I see. And then paint the picture, paint the picture. Imagine you start thinking like God thinks. Here's what happened to brother Yankee, Yong Ki Cha. Uh, the, all these cell groups came out of those, that movement of, of what happened in Korea. One of the biggest churches there. His son died. I think it's his son that died. Yes. And he was dead for hours. And he came. They left him in the room. He came into the house and his son was dead. All right. First of all, isn't, that's enough reason to break down in total emotional, you, you understand. So, but because of a picture that was painted, he knew God can raise the dead. And so he was speaking to his son, looking at his son and speaking life into him. And nothing, nothing happened. And as he almost got discouraged, God spoke to him. He said, go sit at the side of the bed. Listen, this is true. This is happening. So he went and he sat with his back towards his son. He said, now look outside of the window. And he looked outside. He said, now close your eyes and keep looking outside of that window. And he closed his eyes. He said, see your son playing on the grass. Do you, he said, do you see your son playing on the grass? Now call him. Call him. You get it? The son is not dead. He's sleeping. Jesus said it in, in John 11. He says, Lazarus is sleeping. When the child, he came, he said, don't worry, she is sleeping. He saw her well. So he looked out of the window and he shouted the name of his son as if he's calling him home. And the son jumped up, raised from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Andrew Womack, and, and Andrew Womack has the same testimony of how he started seeing himself raising the dead. And his own son died and he was dead in, in the morgue, in the fridge. You know, in the, that, you know, those places, they put those that died. With a tag on his toe, walking up to his son, and because of the picture that was formed in his mind, raised him from the dead. He was dead for five hours or more, I don't know. Raised him from the dead. Because he, what he did is, he started seeing himself raising the dead. And he raised a few people from the dead, and then he realized it's been a decade 
since he raised anyone from the dead, and he went back and started picturing the pictures again, and then he started raising the dead again. So what do we see? What do we see? It's that picture of what we are in, who we are in Christ, what we are able to do in Christ, and what He has done, our inheritance. The Word paints that picture. Just, it's like our minds are this canvas, and the Word wants to paint. That's why hearing the Word is most important in life. Because you hear the news, you hear the reports, you hear people speaking. If you're not hearing the Word more than the voice of reality, it's going to be very difficult to get a greater picture of truth than reality. You're going to be always faced just with what you see around you. But the voice of truth tells us a different story. The voice of truth speaks and you can, you're able to see what God says. I like what um, Corrie ten, ten Boom, what's, what's her? Ten Boom. She, she, she said it like this, when you pray, you're entering the realm where all things are possible. You leave the limited natural realm and you enter a realm where all things are possible. So when we pray and we start imagining, okay, so there's two things. Feed your imagination with the word and start using the thing <laughs> for good. Stop, stop meditating accidents, destruction. If you wake up at night and you're fearful for something, I get up. Last night I got up and I start praying in time. Two o'clock. And I start because I got a negative thought about one, something, about my children, or I had a thought, or I heard something. Something happened. So I was thinking of something. And I warm bra and until I had peace and I went back to bed and start and then start meditating. Instead of not trying to think the worst, feed your imagination with good and meditate purposefully. So I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not gonna be afraid. Versus I see myself in Christ. I see myself like David, like Joshua. I'm not those unbelieving spies. I'm Joshua, I'm Caleb, I'm David. I meditate until I see the picture. See myself conquering the giant. Amen. Amen. Will you change the picture today? Amen. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help, me Help me to see, to see. Like, you see. like you see. Open my eyes, Lord, my eyes. that I will see. I Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. I'm thinking of that scripture in, um, in Corinth, is it Ephesians 1, where he says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Last Sunday, I anointed everyone for spiritual sight. This connects 100% with that message. Yeah, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. You see, so you may know your hope, the inheritance, and the power that is at work within you. So you need to see that power, see your inheritance, and see the hope. <laughs> All right?